Hello there, um, my name is Paul Craddock and I'm a Solutions Engineer at Stratodesk and today I'm here to talk to you about the Stratodesk NoTouch Cloud extension. So for existing customers, um, you'll already be aware that uh, we manage our devices using NoTouch Center which is delivered as a virtual appliance. So this is all very well and good for devices that are um, connected via a local or wide area network. Uh, but more recently, um, we've had a number of customers that want to be able to manage devices that exit that sit ex outside the corporate network, and typically uh, these could be in people's homes. So the problem with that currently um, is that whilst the device may have already been configured by um, an internal no-touch center virtual appliance, as soon as that device leaves the corporate network, it, the device can no longer see the management platform and vice versa. So the way around this is to deploy the cloud extension, which sits in your DMZ and uh, effectively acts as a bridge between the NoTouch endpoint and your internal virtual appliance running NoTouch center. So before we start to go through the deployment, let's talk about the ports. So if you're on an internal network, um, it's not really necessary to um, restrict port access. Um, however, if you're wanting to manage devices that sit outside of your network, then clearly this is, needs to be a key consideration. So as you can see from this network diagram, I have an internal no-touch center that has an IP address of 192.168.1.128 I have a cloud extension that's sitting in my DMZ that has an IP address of 192.168.2.128. I'm just keeping the numbers similar so that it's easy to reference. Now, the communication between the virtual, the internal no-touch center and the cloud extension is all done over port 22 using reverse SSH. The communication between the endpoints and the cloud extension uh, this is done over port 443 um, and then we also use port 667 uh, which is used for screen shadowing so that's an important consideration so i've already deployed my virtual appliances uh, firstly i've got my internal no touch center so this is on a 192.168.1 network and my cloud extension which sits in my dmz is on a 192.168.2 network so we access the virtual appliance uh, via web browser, and the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the virtual appliances are running the same versions. So we can do that into the virtual appliance container administration, go to updates, and we can see here um, the version that's running on my internal no-touch center. And now if I do the same on my virtual appliance for the cloud extension, I go to updates, Again, I can see that they're running the same version. So we're all good there. So what we need to do is firstly, we need to go to No Touch Center, in the internal version that is, and log in. We then need to go to configuration, scroll down until we see the settings for the cloud extension. So all we need to do here is to make a note of the appliance uh, cloud extension uh, IP address and then copy the SSH public key then click save. We will then go to the cloud extension and then we will scroll down to the cloud extension parameters. Firstly, we need to turn the cloud extension mode on and click save. And then finally, we need to paste in the SSH key and click save. Now that we've enabled the cloud extension mode, you will see that the no touch center login for the cloud extension is no longer available um, as all management is going to be done through the main no touch center. So the next step would be to reboot the devices uh, which I have, sorry, reboot the virtual appliances, which is something I've done already. And if we now go into no touch center 
go to resources and then about we can see here that the cloud extension is connected to the main no touch center Another important note whilst I'm in this menu is licenses. So in order to use the cloud extension, um, you must have a cloud extension license. So I, as you can see here, uh, I have five uh, available. The next step is to have a device connect to no touch center via the cloud extension. So you'll see here on the left-hand side that I've got my uh, groups um, and I have a group set up for external devices and I'm using um, an automatic assignment rule so that the device when it finds no touch center will automatically go into the correct group based on its uh, IP address and pick up its configuration. So if you now switch to an endpoint um, you'll see here that um, on the startup wizard, um, I am pointing this to my cloud extension. Now, it is also worth pointing out here that I'm actually using a, a NAT rule. So this isn't the true IP address of my cloud extension. So if I now click finish, that device has now announced itself to no touch center via the cloud extension. It is going to reboot because that is a parameter that I've set and that it should reboot on first configuration transfer. And you'll see now that the device has picked up all its configuration connection if I want it to. So now that everything's um, connected, um, let's just take a look at the configuration on the endpoint. And we can go to system information. And we can actually see that um, the um, configured service URL. So as I say, this is actually going through my, my cloud extension using network address uh, translation. So let's assume now we want to make a change to the configuration. Um, well, we can do that. So we want to create a new connection. So I'm going to do this from my top level group. And I'm just going to just call this internet. And I'll then just create a Chromium connection. And then I can put in a target URL. And then if I announce that change to the endpoint, you should see the screen flash and we've now got our new connection and I can then launch that connection. And there you go. So let's now say the user they're working outside of the corporate network and at home. So all the user needs to do is press Control Alt and I. That sends out an identification request to No Touch Center. We'll click the Identify option, and we can now highlight that device, and it will take us directly to the group within which it sits. So the user doesn't need to know the host name, the IP address of their endpoint. They can just press the Control Alt and I and uh, we can find the device uh, quite easily there. So now we can connect to that user session, providing obviously that they have an internet connection and we can screen shadow using um, HTML5. Again, there you go. So we now have um, full control of the user's desktop and we can make any changes that we want to. If we then take that a step further and we want to perform a firmware update to take into account new features added to No Touch Center. So firstly, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have firmware available in our uh, repository. So we do, I have a number of firmware updates here. If we look at the device itself, 
um, we can then just scroll down and we can see that it is running 3.1.25. What we would do is we'd do this um, at the, rather than at the device level, um, at the group level. So next, all I'm going to do is I'm just gonna select the image version and I want to select um, the image update mode. So we can do this at reboot or announce, but I'll just do this at reboot. Sorry, at announce. I'll announce that change. And you can see that the update uh, has already, process has already started. So you've got to remember that I'm managing this device um, from an internal source that's protected. The device is connecting to no touch center using the cloud extension. And I have basically the same level of control over that device um, as I would as if it sits on the corporate network. Now, obviously this process is just gonna take a minute or two um, to complete that firmware update process. So the firmware update process is now completed and the device has rebooted. So if we now go back into No Touch Center, click on the device itself, we can scroll down and we can now see that it's running the latest firmware update that I've pushed out. So as I've as previously mentioned, uh, the cloud extension really gives you um, full control of any device that sits outside of the corporate network. So we can push configuration updates, we can push firmware updates, um, and we can even shadow a user session. Anyway, I hope you found this video uh, useful, and uh, please feel free to come back again soon for more content.